Hello, fight fans and fight family. Seattle Mike of MMA with friends here. Everybody, please hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. If you like everything, fighting, boxing, UFC, all that jazz, make sure you ring that bell so you're notified whenever I drop a new video to bring you some new news. Or go live like for the fight companion, Israel Adesanya versus Yoel Romero. That is going to be an exciting one. All right, guys, title fights in the UFC. We have had a few reasons uh, that champions over the years have either been stripped of their titles uh, or they've actually been ineligible to fight for a title or they're not able to make their title shot. Uh, from, you know, recently with Nico Montagna uh, not being able to make weight and being stripped of her championship going to Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, to John Jones, uh, you know, not liking the replacement opponent and refusing to fight Chel Soner on an eight days notice. To Dominique Reyes, numerous injuries over the years and strips uh, to things like TJ Dillashaw testing positive for EPO back in the day. Josh Barnett. Uh, testing positive for steroids. Randy Couture. Uh, giving up his title due to contract disputes. I'm giving all these examples out here because these are all things I want you guys to feel free to bring up. If you want to bring up some old memories uh, or just talk about these things, I love it when you guys hear something in the video and you end up making kind of like a little side discussion. Uh, it really makes my week just that much better. Uh, to interact with you guys on all these different things. So a few more examples. Uh, Travis Luter at the end of Ultimate Fighter 4 uh, was able to fight Anderson Silva uh, because he won the comeback series. The belt was not on the line, though, because he did not make weight, was cut shortly after. Uh, of course, Yoel Romero uh, recently was overweight, uh, when he fought against Robert Whitaker and the title was not on the line. The flyweight division, uh, this has been a tough one. It was pretty hard to get people behind Demetrius Johnson, uh, even though he was one of the greatest mixed martial artists, pound for pound, I believe, probably ever. Uh, then you have uh, Henry Cejudo come in. He says, I want to save the featherweight championship. Uh, one of the last guys to beat him, or maybe the last guy to beat him, Joseph Benavidez, uh, you know, signed to fight for the featherweight championship. Uh, that's another way that fighters lose their belt. Uh, Conor McGregor uh, didn't defend for so long. And he ended up being stripped. Daniel Cormier uh, stripped, same thing. Both guys having two belts. Uh, but then you have a guy that, two fighters that get opportunities. Um uh, you know, like Joseph Benavidez and Davison Figueredo to fight for a vacant flyweight championship. A weight class that the UFC has already hinted that they would like to get rid of maybe several times. Uh, it's definitely been in the works. They've never actually said we're getting rid of it, but they've never really said that they were keeping it either. Henry Cejudo looked to be giving a lifeline to that belt, but with injuries, it's hard to defend two belts. So you give Joseph Benavides and Davison Figueredo shots at the titles. And that fight was supposed to happen this Saturday. And then today, these guys got on the scale. And lo and behold, Joseph Benavides gets on the scale. He makes weight. 36, 37 years old, I think. A husband of... Megan Olivi, for those that don't know, she'll be sitting ringside for the first time, I believe, for one of his fights ever. She's usually one of the Octagon interviewers, if not the main interviewer of the fighters. Uh, Devison Figueredo, uh, he's had a pretty meteoric rise in the UFC. Now he's got this opportunity to fight for the flyweight championship. And what does he do? He comes in almost three pounds heavy. Inexcusable. Why are you in a weight class if you can't make the weight? Why are you 
fighting for the championship. This is what you live your career for. You picked a weight class. You worked your way all the way to the UFC. You get to the scales. You know what the weight is that you have to make. You've tested this cut. You've made this several times. Then everything is on the line. Everything you've worked for in your entire life. This is the UFC World Championship. This is the biggest fight organization in the history of the planet freaking Earth. And you come in 2.7 pounds overweight. Sorry if I got a little excited there. This is not just a dishonor to himself, to Divis and Figueredo, all of his coaches that have worked with him, all of the trainers. This is a dishonor to Joseph Benavidez because now he has to come in there against a guy who has an unfair weight advantage that even if that guy wins, he won't even get the championship. To all the fans that are watching, Definitely all the fans of Diggis and Federato. I mean, this guy, the fans that he had, he's going to lose and he's not making uh, too many more. You had one job. You had one job basically to be eligible for this championship battle. You've done everything else. You're ranked. You're in great shape. We know you know how to fight. Fridays, all you have to do is you have to step on that scale and you have to weigh something below 126 pounds. A weight class that you signed and you told these guys on contract, you work out probably six, seven days a week. And your main job, I mean, the title is not even on the line. You cannot become world champion no matter what you do in that cage if you don't take care of that first. Now, how you step on a cage or on a scale, excuse me, to get into a cage and you're almost three pounds overweight completely blows my mind. It completely blows my mind as a former athlete, as a martial artist. I never, ever had problem cutting weight. When I was doing judo, we were doing, you know, we would have, I was in 156 pounds for a long time. Uh, when I had to drop four pounds, I got up to 160. Uh, when I was actually dropping, I'm, you know, I was younger. I like, no, I'm growing. I'm going to go up to 172. Inexcusables from Davis and Ferguson, uh, Figueredo, excuse me. And uh, Saturday, we'll see what happens. I got to wrote for Benavidez even more after that. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I'm really looking forward to all of your conversations. And don't be shy to make those side conversations uh, from other things that... Uh, I put in this video other conversations or just things that you have seen throughout the week. Look forward to talking to you guys. As always, I love you. I respect you. And I'll see your fine asses later.